So today, I want to find out if the speed of your SSD makes any difference in gaming. Stay tuned. So, if you watched last week's video, we built a mid-range gaming system, and in that system, I used a Gen 3 SSD. The reason I did that was because I was trying to stay on a budget, and I didn't think the price uh, difference between a Gen 3 and a Gen 4 would be justified in a gaming system. So, after that video, I found a really good deal on a Gen 4 SSD for about $15 more than what we paid for the Gen 3 SSD. So today, I'm going to find out if it was a right choice to use the Gen 3 or if I should have gone with the Gen 4. But first, I got to pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So we're not just going to be testing the difference between a Gen 3 and a Gen 4 SSD. We're also going to throw a SATA SSD into the mix and see if we need an NVMe drive at all. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to gaming, once the game is loaded into memory, the speed of the storage device is honestly kind of irrelevant. I mean, obviously this isn't true in all cases because the game still reads from your storage device whenever it loads new levels or new dependencies. But for the most part, the speed of your storage device itself isn't going to affect you much in the gameplay itself. But with that said, we still don't want to wait around and stare at a loading screen all day. So the way I benchmarked these SSDs here is I first cloned the same install of Windows 11 onto all three of them. So these SSDs are going to be acting as the boot drive as well as the drive that the game is loaded on for the entire testing. Obviously though, for this testing, we don't need to test a ton of different games. So I picked two games that I thought had a reasonably long loading time. These games are Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk 2077. For each game, I ran two tests. I timed the amount of time it took from the moment the game was launched until I got to the game's main menu. I then timed the amount of time it took to load a game save and get into the game itself. I also went ahead and did a frame rate benchmark on both games just to make sure I was right that it wasn't going to affect gameplay. And I was right. <laughs> both games ran exactly the same no matter which drive I used. However, there were some differences in loading time. So let's take a look at them. Okay, I'm going to start out with Red Dead Redemption 2. On the SATA SSD, it took 50.5 seconds to get from the play button in Steam to the game's main menu. Once switching over to the Gen 3 SSD, it took 49.5 seconds from the play button in Steam to the game's main menu. That's a one second improvement. One second doesn't really seem like much, but that accounts for 2% better. It's still not a huge improvement, but it did save a second. And then once switching over to the Gen 4 SSD, the game launched in 48.96 seconds. That was only about half a second improvement, or 1% over the Gen 3 SSD. Now, when it comes to the time it took to load the game saves, with the SATA SSD, we were able to load a game save in 38.9 seconds. But when switching over to the Gen 3 NVMe, we were able to load the game save in 38.4 seconds. That's an improvement of almost half a second. Now, once I switched over to the Gen 4 NVMe, I was able to load the same game save in 38.5 seconds. So it was about a tenth of a second slower. But accounting for the margin of error, it was about the same. So far the performance increase really aren't that noteworthy. So let's switch over to Cyberpunk and see what we got there. 
In Cyberpunk, with the SATA SSD, I was able to launch the game in 35.87 seconds. Once switching over to the Gen 3 NVMe, I was able to load the game in 34.3 seconds. That's an improvement of about a second and a half or so, or about 4.4%. Once I switched over to the Gen 4 SSD, I was able to launch the game in 33.6 seconds. That's a little less than a second improvement, or about 2.2%. So at this point, the test seemed kind of bunk. I didn't think I was going to see any noteworthy results. However, loading game saves in Cyberpunk kind of surprised me. With the SATA SSD, I was able to load a game save in 9.46 seconds. But then when switching over to the Gen 3 SSD, I was able to load the same game save in 7.9 seconds. That's a little over a second and a half improvement, or about 18%. Once I switched to the Gen 4 SSD though, I was able to load the same game save in the same 7.9 seconds. So I got a really good improvement between the SATA SSD and the NVMe, but not too much improvement between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 NVMe. So aside from the game saves in Cyberpunk, which I think are a pretty good improvement, it didn't seem to make much difference which drive I was using. With that said though, the difference was obvious in Windows. I mean, not so much between Gen 3 and Gen 4, but the difference between the SATA SSD itself and the NVMe drives was pretty noticeable. So I decided to fire up Crystal Disk Mark and see how much faster these different drives were from each other. So right here is the SATA SSD and right here is the Gen 3 NVMe. As you can see, the top two lines on both are the sequential read and write tests. With the SATA SSD, we're looking at about half a gigabyte a second, read and write, while we're sitting at 2.5 gigabytes read, while two gigabytes write on the NVMe. However though, when you move down to the bottom two lines and you look at the random read and writes, the drives aren't so much apart from each other. In fact, the SATA SSD actually beat the NVMe in the Q1 random read and write. I mean, not by much, but it was still a win. Now, if we switch over and compare the NVMe drives, I'll put the Gen 3 on this side now and the Gen 4 over on this side. As you can see, there's a considerable difference in the top two lines with the sequential read and writes. Like I said before, we're looking at 2.5 gigabytes a second read and two gigabytes a second write off of the Gen 3. But we're between five to seven gigabytes a write read and five to six gigabytes a second write on the Gen 4 SSD. And even when we look at the random read and writes at the bottom two lines, we still see a pretty good improvement in Gen 4. So here's the conclusion I think we can come to with these results. Obviously, playing games is not going to fall into sequential read and writes. We are going to be looking at more of the random read and writes for the performance that will improve gameplay. But if that's the case, then it doesn't make any sense why we got to the conclusion that we got to in our benchmarks. Because if we're looking at sequential, then it makes sense why we would get such a big improvement between the SATA SSD and the Gen 3 NVMe. But that doesn't explain why we didn't get an even bigger improvement with the Gen 4 NVMe. So ultimately, I think the decision to use the Gen 3 in our build last week was kind of justified. But at the same time, maybe not. I mean, $15 isn't a lot of money. And if you can get a really quick Gen 4 drive, then it might be worth the extra 15 bucks, if that's the difference for the ones you're looking at. However, in the long run, I don't think switching to a Gen 4 SSD is going to improve your gaming performance much. There is, however, maybe other uses in your system that will benefit from the Gen 4 SSD. And in that case, $15 is a Subway sandwich. But now that I think about it, whatever happened to $5 footlongs? $15 is a lot of money for Subway. But with that said, now that we've looked at whether or not SSD performance is important in gaming, have you ever wondered if CPU cores are important in gaming? If so, check out this video where I test what happens to gaming performance when you disable CPU scores. That was a pretty fun video. As always, you guys have a great day.